As gardeners, we're all familiar with mushrooms and other fungi that we find in the landscape the type that we try to grow and certainly maybe enjoy eating, uh, and also some of the disease-causing fungi that affect our plants. But there's also a number of beneficial fungi uh, that live in the soil. And joining me is Dr. Gail Wilson. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm really interested in finding out what's hidden beneath the soil surface here. There's a couple of big, very important fungi dwelling. Well, there's two really mm -hmm. important groups of fungi that are, you don't see on top of the surface, but are very important to soil structure and to plant nutrient uptake. Um, one of the fungi that um, are very present that you can see when you dig into the soil are saprophytic fungi. Okay, we have. We Let's would find some if we some dug here. around, certainly underneath this pine tree. When you have a lot of litter. A lot of litter. Uh -huh. um, under pine trees, you'll find. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you just scrape away the surface, here's mm -hmm. um, the, the white uh, growth. You can see saprophytic fungi is fairly large. Mm -hmm. You can see the growth right on the trees. And this okay. is important for decomposing. Okay. And it'll help break down nutrients, break, break down organic matter to, mm -hmm. to um, supply nutrients for the plants to take up. So this is going to help uh, break that soil down and, and yeah, help break some of the organic the matter down, down so it'll so it'll release those mm -hmm. um, nutrients, especially nitrogen, phosphorus, some of the important nutrients for the plant. Gail, what's the other big group of soil dwelling fungi we find? Well, another very important group of soil fungi are the mycorrhizal fungi, and they're a lot smaller. They're not as obvious as the saprophytic fungi, mm -hmm. but they're extremely important for plants to take up nutrients, take up water. Mm -hmm. And especially in sustainable agriculture or sustainable gardening, they're very, very important for the plants. Now there's a couple different types of these and I'm somewhat familiar. Some of them penetrate into the roots, right? And others grow outside of it, is that correct? Uh, we have mm -hmm. two, the two major groups that you'll find in gardening in this area are ectomycorrhizae and they are very important with pine trees, um, spruce, some of the, the uh, and some of the other trees, like oaks, form um, ectomycorrhizae. And, these... and those form more around the outside. They don't okay. penetrate the root cell, mm -hmm. although they'll penetrate in between the cells into the plant root, but they don't penetrate the actual cell itself. Okay. So they're called ecto, mm -hmm. and they can have an enormous amount of hyphae that extends past the plant root with that type of mycorrhizal fungi. And what's the type that penetrates the, other the root? Is, uh, it's they either call it endomycorrhizae mm -hmm. or often, more often, it's called um, arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. Okay. And that's actually inside the plant cells themselves in the plant cortex. Okay. The well, hyphae still extends into the oh, okay. soil. So the, there's hyphae outside the plant root in both but of these But they also groups. go in. Okay. How important are these to plant growth? Um, they can be extremely important. Pine's a great example of mm -hmm. how important these fungi are. Um, the plant roots will actually be very different if they're, um, not, if they're colonized by this beneficial fungi than if they're grown in a, in a container system. Now, I happen to have one in a container. We have a pine tree in a container, which you know, happened to be a great example. And we dug out some of those roots. Um, you see there's a early. lot. You have the, pine, the same primary root, but you get all these real fine secondary mm -hmm. roots that just that the plant is trying to send out its roots now to take up nutrients because it doesn't have the fungi to take up nutrients. So, but the difference between using with pines using fertilizer versus the symbiont is you need a lot of fertilizer. The pines are extremely um, obligate. They've co-evolved with these fungi for millions of years and they're extremely dependent on the fungi. So it's very, very difficult to grow pines without native soil, without and some kind of soil. You can see that when you look at the plant in the container, how it's kind of yellow. They tend it's to look struggling. very yellow. They, yeah. yeah, they just don't take up nutrients very well without their fungi. It's a big difference. Now you mentioned that this association was discovered with pines when they tried to move those to different parts of the yeah. world. Historically, the um, southern hemisphere did not have this type of fungi, this ectomycorrhizal fungi. Mm -hmm. And they found in the northern, this was like in the 50s, they found in the northern hemisphere in the United States and Canada that pines were very useful in restoration, coal mine restorations. Mm -hmm. And so they tried to use pines and restorations in Puerto Rico and some of the southern hemispheres, South America. Very, no success. The pines could not grow at all. But if they translocated some soil with the pines, they did you know extremely well mm -hmm. so it was kind of the first concept where they learned that soil had more 
it must have a biotic component or a living component that's helping these plants that they're not just a you know, medium for the plant to grow in but there's actually beneficial organisms that are associated with the plant. That's fascinating. Now yeah. how many of our plants have these types of associations? Um, that have mycorrhizal associations mm -hmm. is certainly the rule not the exception. Okay. So it's estimated that about 90% of all plant species wow. form mm -hmm. this association with mycorrhizae. Are there other really important groups that are dependent on these associations? Well, here in the Great Plains, mm -hmm. um, it's, there's some very important plant species. So all of our range plants, the warm season grasses, big blue stem Indian grass, um, switchgrass, mm -hmm. all of those plants are extremely dependent on mycorrhizal fungi. If they don't have the symbiont, then you have to add a lot of commercial fertilizer for those plants to grow. Let's look at some of these in our native garden. Okay. We have a lot of the same plants uh, in our native garden, the butterfly milkweed and some of the grasses that you find in our native prairies. And I know you've been doing some work on the tall grass prairie looking at the growth of hyphae. Tell us about that. Um, well, the growth of the, of the hyphae is, is very large. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of hyphae in just a small amount of soil. So one way we we uh, quantify it is we make these, we call them hyphalin growth bags, mm -hmm. and they're made with a mesh that the hyphae can penetrate, but even small roots can't. Okay. So when we fill them full of sand that we've blown all the, uh, car cooked all the carbon off of, so we heat the sand really high, put it in this mm -hmm. very fine mesh and the hyphae can grow in. We put them in in the spring, take them out in the fall, or put them in in the fall, take them out in the, in the you know, one year later, and we can estimate one year's growth of hyphae. Okay. So another way to measure hyphae is to just take soil and extract the hyphae from it, but you don't know how old it is. This is going to tell you one year, how much is produced okay. in, in a single year. Because mm -hmm. you replace them each year. Mm -hmm. And you have a sample of so what this is it an, looks like? A sample of, mm -hmm. so this would be the amount of hyphae that we extracted from this amount of, this volume of soil of, of hyphal ingrowth bag in a year. So you can see there's just a lot of hyphae. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very fine. They're very small. Uh, very, very small. Yeah. But So if you stretch this out, mm -hmm. you could, what we find um, frequently is in a tablespoon of soil, that amount of soil, we'll find enough hyphae that if you stretched it out, it'd be about 100 yards or a football field length of hyphae all smushed into one small amount of soil, a teaspoonful of soil. With all of that, in, the, in just a small amount of soil, it must have a really large impact on the structure of the soil. Yeah, well. we think they have a very, very large mm -hmm. impact on, on the structure. So if you think of small soil particles, all mm -hmm. this hyphae is going to wrap around and entwine and enmesh some of those small particles and hold them all together. And the hyphae is hydrophobic, so it doesn't, the water will repel. So if it wraps around and, and sticks these pieces of, mm -hmm. of um, soil together, it's it's uh, safe even when it gets wet. So if you add water to it, they don't break apart. Don't break. Where if you don't have the hyphae and you add water, they tend to just disperse and fall apart. You end up with a lot, a lot of little small soil particles that can be carried away in the wind right. much more easily. They can be water erosion much, you know, much, okay. much more easy. So it's much um, healthier for the soil to have these larger soil aggregates. Now, when we look at our garden soils, what, what can we do to protect these mycorrhizae here in our in our landscape. Well, one thing you can do is not apply large amounts of commercial fertilizer. Hmm. Um, large amounts of fertilizer, the plant doesn't need the hyphae. So one interesting thing about these hyphae is the plants we said needed the fungi. Well, the fungi need the plants. So there's right. a, a mutual beneficial relationship here. The fungi gets all of its energy or its carbon from the plant. It can't okay. take up any carbon on its own. Me. And then in our vegetable I mean, gardens, in we our can vegetable do the same gardens, thing? you can do the same thing. Okay. Um, tillage, right. if you till them, is going to be detrimental because you mm -hmm. think of all this hyphae is up. going through the soil. You're going to mm -hmm. break all that up. So we want to reduce um, our so tillage. We reduce tillage. Okay. Um, they find in no-till and big mm -hmm. commercial corn and wheat, no-till is very beneficial for the soil fungi, for the mycorrhizal fungi. Now I see a lot of products on the market that um, are for inoculating soils and trying to initiate that. Are those really necessary? Be really careful. Uh -huh. um, very, very seldom do you need to add commercial inoculum. Mm -hmm. Most places, mo I mean, most gardens that you have are going to have are going to have plenty of mycorrhizal fungi. It may take a year or two for them to promote and grow, but they they will. You don't need yeah. to add. 
Um, the problem with the commercial inoculum, there's several problems, but one of them is they're often suspended in very high nutrient mm -hmm. um, fish meal or some kind of carrier that's very, very high in nutrient. Okay. And the idea is when you add it on, you do get a nice flush of growth, but what you're doing is you're reducing the mm -hmm. mycorrhizal fungi because it's you're really just adding high you're nutrient. Fertilizing. And again, yeah. most of that that you're adding is going to be washed out of the out of the garden and into the aquatic system. The other problem with the commercial inoculum is often they are not native okay. fungi, and we don't know what that does. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to look below ground on what fungi are, are there, and does it make a difference? Are we really adding like the kudzu below ground when we add some of these commercial inoculums? We don't know, and no mm -hmm. one knows yet. So we're better so off bringing definitely in just, some native yeah, you soil? Bring in, if you yeah. need, you think you need more inoculum, you can bring in native soil, but most of these soils will have, even if it's a reduced rate of, fun, of mycorrhizal fungi, they'll, they'll still be there. Well, thank um, you. This then is you can just yeah. go and save money because you're not adding all that fertilizer. That's right. Well, these are really a fascinating uh, kingdom of organisms. I appreciate you helping me with oh, this. Oh, well, you're welcome. Thanks for having me out here. I love mycorrhizal fungi.